Na 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 Yeah. So please come and see us there. And now we will uh, tell you the origin story about our crew. In a filthy old tavern in the port of Belfast. There sat a drunken laddie. He was tall as a schooner's mast. He said, My name is Charles, and I am your king, and my royal ass on your ship you shall bring. Well, I said, You sure can swagger, but a king you are not. And if I had that fucker here, I'd sure have him shot. But I need one more swabber. And we're leaving tonight, and you'll find the pay is good. Can you sail? Can you fight? Are you ready, Claus and Flans? Each 
Revolution's no good, but come to an end. And Charlie, a letter from England was sent. It turned out that Brasco was truly a king. He returned to his exile during the spring. I killed him on the suit of all the set. Charlie's Rovers with sailors the smith. Is that your loudest? Louder! We are Ivan Pirates. We are King Charlie's Rovers with sailors the smith. We are Ivan Pirates. We'll be hanged by the neck if they bring them we steer. We are King Charles Rovers with sailors besmeared. We are Ivan Privateers. We'll be hanged by the neck if the England will steer. We are Ivan Privateers. We are King Charles Rovers with sailors besmeared. We are Ivan Privateers. to of course first of all invite you all to join our amazing community privateers of libertaria and also a special thanks for the new same but different community the privateers of cybertalia who just connected during the whole corona where we couldn't play anywhere we just were online and there was a suddenly a huge crowd of people all over the world and we just wanted to say thank you for all the support. And then, of course, please come to my merch stand over there and buy all my merch because I don't want to bring all of that shit home again. Enjoy! Buy the merch, seriously. <laughs> So guys, uh, are you going to sing along with this one too? So it starts da 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 da.
so that was Louise. Happy Lou. <laughs> uh, we have time for two more songs, right? So, uh, Eva, would you uh, start us the next song, please?
Without both king and nobleman, in the grand Liberia town. on stage here and I hope you enjoyed it uh, we got to see part of it how can they not have enjoyed <laughs> that it's like asking if you're hungry and uh, walking yeah, in the yeah, desert yeah. you haven't drink water for days and then someone gets the first sip of water sip, and I hope you enjoyed it you know uh, I'll rephrase you better have enjoyed that <laughs> <laughs> yes you better <laughs> But yeah, like I said, 12 Pirates rocking it on stage and we saw the last bit of the show because we were actually elsewhere. Uh, we had some business over at Per Kelt and you have a special relationship with that band, right? Oh yeah, I love the Per Kelt's. I've, uh, 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 I've discovered them years and years and years ago before they ever went to any festival in the Netherlands and we were on a holiday in Cambridge. And I was with my family there and, and we were on a square actually on the Cambridge. And 
they were just playing there, you know. Yeah, busking. And, and like like street musicians, and then, you know, in the middle of the day, and people are some people are watching, uh, you know, and, and 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 you can buy the CD, but there's street musicians that, uh, at least at that performance, but they were incredible. Uh, we were blown away. Of course, we already we been to Cost Fest from the first edition, and we've been to all these kinds of festivals with all the music. So you know, you know how to recognize quality. You know, you know. And, and I thought those guys had to have to be on Castle Fest. And now we're years and years and years later because we made contact. We made contact with them from Facebook. They came to a very small gigs from England, all over the way in, in France as well, to to the Netherlands, to. Um, uh, yeah, well, to perform here, and we became very close friends, had lots of fun, lots of laughs, and uh, I was very happy to be able to see them also uh, today as, uh, in my spare time, in my free time. Yeah, we were allowed for a moment not to work. Um, I, I was there because uh, Steppi had a very big role. He actually produced the whole CD that you know, hope it is the thing with the patterns. Um, you know, getting us through, let's say, darker times or the intermediate times where all of the artists, many that you have seen here this weekend and probably will see tomorrow, collaborated to, you know, write new songs specifically to let the people know that we are still here. We may be in a situation where we can't meet, but we're not forgotten, the artists are not forgotten, you are not forgotten, and yes, yeah, Steppi had a big role in that, so um, he got another award. Yeah, you just gave him the actual physical reward after all these years. Well, not years, maybe year. But uh, no, actually, it, it three one. years since I've seen him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that you've seen him. So you could actually physically give them. And there was maybe one of the longest hugs I've seen <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> because here in Castle Fest, it's free hugs all over the place. You know, you can hug you, even the containers that are standing here. You know, everybody loves a hug. Well, m almost everybody. You know, and they're most, mostly, as, as, especially when you haven't seen each other for a long time, very long. And this was like 10 minutes, I don't know, it, it, I stopped counting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's such a guy, you know, he, he keeps on giving. So it's wonderful, you know, to have him in your arms. So, yeah, I mean, Perkeld was awesome. We even danced a bit. Um, we had something nice to eat. And, um, uh, yeah, had a, had a great time. We we're happy to be back in time for Ivanish Privateers as well. But... Um, you did something earlier today. We already spoke about it when we announced the Banish Privateers, but we are now ready to show it on our live stream, uh, the LARP video. Oh yeah, yeah, finally it's finished. You know, it took like like eight hours to uh, compress it and whatever. So, uh, but finally the guys from the Technique got it properly uh, uh, prepared for you guys. So we, after talking about my LARP adventure yesterday, the day before and today, <laughs> As my highlight is finally you're gonna see what happens. So I hope you really you guys really enjoy it and we'll see you afterwards. No no no, no. you said they don't hope. You better enjoy it. You better enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you don't like the LARP, still stay tuned because afterwards we have found coming to this live. very table live. The live right. interview we found and that's wonderful because tonight it's their only performance, and of course you can see it on Castle Fest television. 11 o'clock Central European time, Fawn will be on stage. <laughs> uh, but first, of course, we have the Wicker and Nibala after, but you know, what we start off with now is your love video. I'm so curious what you did. Uh, I, I would say roll the tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Central European Reached time. That's very one smart. of the highlights yeah, yeah. of my personal Castle Fest experience. Uh, I'm gonna do something so cool. I'm looking forward to all weekends. Uh, it's live action role play, LARP, and I'm sitting here with Mariska in a beautiful surroundings. It's like the high hill forest with uh, multiple encampments of, uh, of LARP encampments. Between the stages, you, know, you have a bit background music for the atmosphere, but uh, not too much uh, pounding of the drums and, uh, and all uh, no other noises. And here, there are all kinds of adventures happening, uh, Mariska. Um, um, can you tell us something about, uh, well, what LARP is and what you guys are doing here? Yeah, definitely. Um, as you already said, LARP is live action role play. And the idea is basically that we're doing improvisation theater, but without public. The only thing we're improvising is for ourselves and we're just enjoying the game with each other. Um, yeah, the 
what we're doing here is we've got multiple LARP organizations promoting their own events. And personally, I'm here from the LARP platform. We're on a website that tries to collect all the information about LARP in the Netherlands. Uh, we also have an agenda where you can see all the LARPs happening in the weekend and with all the events that take place in the Netherlands. You can sort on genre and everything. So yeah, that's basically what we're doing here. We're trying to show the public what LARP is, to answer all their questions, and maybe even help them to the LARP event that's right for them. Yes, and to focus on live action role playing, role playing, yeah. that's the basis of, all of it. Uh, can you tell us something about what the what's role playing? Yeah, uh, role playing is actually, it's both very simple and very difficult. The idea is at, at the LARP, you play a character that is not yourself. So you, uh, you either think of a character that you want to play or you get a character from the organization uh, that can be someone like yourself or that can be someone that's really, really different from yourself. And you take that character and then you go to an event and at the event you play that character. You act out all their actions and well, pretend to be that character for a weekend. Yeah, so I could be a fairy from the forest with wings, even though I look more like a caveman. Absolutely, if you want to be. I mean, I played a fairy a few weeks ago at a Midsummer Night LARP. Oh, Midsummer Night LARP, that sounds very nice. Yep, definitely, because uh, most people, when they think about LARP, they think about standard high fantasy, the world of D&D, Dungeons Dragons, all that sort of stuff. But currently in the Netherlands, there is such a wide range of LARPs. That's not all high fantasy. I mean, three weeks ago, I was sitting in my fancy historical dress, sipping tea, gossiping with my neighbors and going after all the bachelors. And the week after that, I was a sci-fi uh, scientist growing my own spaceship in my own bathtub. Um, wow, that, uh, you, if you look at my t-shirt, you recognize it, so you uh, you you can you, you mentioned sci-fi, so you have also maybe Star Trek role playing. Um, yes, I don't believe there are currently any Star Trek events, but there is definitely sci-fi events, um, and not just sci-fi, also post-apocalyptic. There are game, uh, there are LARPs inspired by games like uh, Fallout LARP uh, happened at wow. that time. Uh, there are wizard LARPs where you can live to be in a wizard school for a while. Like Hogwarts, you know, Harry Potter style. Yes, um, the LARPs that play wizard schools are not Harry Potter world, but they're definitely inspired by. Yeah, it's, it's more like it's not because it's probably uh, copyrighted and things like that. So you, you, you uh, approach this sort of uh, theme of Harry Potter like atmosphere, maybe with sci-fi as well. It, it's a bit, bit like Star Trek, but not officially because otherwise it will be maybe uh, copyrighted or something. Yeah, that, but also because they're not tied to a specific world and a specific franchise, they can do more fun stuff and they can improvise their themselves again with the world and the creatures that live in there. So Much more freedom. And, and yeah, you're talking about events all the time, eh? because yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to it, it, it's not like an online game where you play a uh, uh, RPG or a uh, uh, pen and paper RPG. You have to come together as well, of course. But now you're also dressed up. So you have to go somewhere, you have to get, get your uh, uh, merchandise, your stuff. We've been on the games and stuff uh, uh, a st a stall as well. Loads of great costumes and swords and things. But So can you tell me something about the life aspect of the RPG? Um, yeah, the most LARP events in the Netherlands are a weekend, but there are also quite a lot of LARP events that are just one evening or most of the children's LARPs are just a single day because, again, there are LARPs also for every age, from the age of four to, well, if you, if you are 70 or 80 and want to LARP. Four years old, you can start with LARP at wi four years old. Yeah, yep, uh, currently at the LARP arena, the battlefield, there is the Kids LARP Artago, which is from s four or six years old to 12, and there is the Kids LARP Expiatio, which is from 12 to 18 years old. So for kids that want to go on a little quest, they can go there. And there is also the LARP arena where people can try out, well, LARP fighting. LARP fighting, yeah, because the, yeah, LARP fighting always looks very cool, you know, with all the swords clashing and every, one big chaos, but actually it's very structured with, with very uh, uh, strict rules, right? Uh, yeah, it's still, of course, still all of it is improvised uh, and we all have rule sets and everything. So for example, one LARP says, okay, you have Three hit points, so if you're hit three times, lay down on the ground and you're out. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, it is both very structured and still very improvised because it is still theater in a way. Uh, if you make every move very big and make the noise that goes with it, and yeah. how, how bigger, how bigger and more theatrical you make your hits, everything, the more fun it is for the person receiving it, and the more dramatic they will play out that they're dying, for example, or taking their hits or whatever else it is. And that's uh, also the thing with LARP. I like how big and grand everything goes. Cause, well, you can get really dramatic. Yeah, and, and, and those events there are for at least one day, and but also several days, and then you sleep in these encampments. Yeah, there is uh, LARPs that are camping, like like you kind of see here, where we pitch our tents uh, in-game, so the, pe the tents are all in style. It's still not reenactment, usually the inside of the tents, people are just air mattresses and everything. But there are also plenty of LARPs that have indoor sleeping, um, they just hire group accommodations with bunk beds or giant rows of mattresses. And they, those LARPs can also be all-inclusive, so you don't even have to cook your own food, I mean. And, and how do you cre create your own character? Um, that depends. Um, the process is, of course, different for everyone. Uh, personally, I just like to read the website of the LARP, um, which world it is, what kind of play they have, and then reads through the rule set. And usually when I read the rule set, I get an idea of, oh, I, I'd like to play with this. For example, in this LARP, the crafting system looks really interesting and I'd like to play with that. Or in another uh, LARP, I can, for example, say, oh, this, this race looks really interesting to play with. I really want to play um, an elf here or I'd like to play, play a priest at this LARP. Um, and usually from there, I have a base idea of want to what I want to do with my character. And then as I'm crafting... You create a backstory. Yeah, you create a backstory. Um, it can either be a really short one, like half an A4, or you can have multiple pages. That depends on the person. Personally, I, I like to keep them short. But yeah, because it's live, you do need a costume as well. So when you uh, yeah, thought of your character, you created it, you had the backstory, then you still have to look like it. Yeah, that's correct. Um, Personally, but again, that's me. I like to craft everything myself. Um, for you me crafted this as well. I crafted this. I did not craft the pants, but yes. Okay, no, but it's it's impressive. Thank you. No, for me, LARP is a good excuse to make more costumes, and that's a completely valid reason to LARP as well. But there, so are you have an extra hobby added to the uh, the whole. It's uh, well, it's part of the LARP, of course, but the creation process is also um, something you like to do, uh, work toward uh, towards. Yes, definitely. But for me, it was more that LARP was an extra hobby to my costume crafting. <laughs> <laughs> but there are plenty of people that don't want to craft their own costumes, either don't have the time, the, the money, or, or aren't just that crafty. And I mean, thrifting in uh, secondhand shops is definitely a good way to get costumes. Uh, mm. Tunics and everything can just be bought or gotten at secondhand stores. Or you can commission them if you are slightly more on the money. Um, you can commit. There are plenty of LARP people that cr uh, that build costumes for others. So you don't have to craft your own costumes, and you can buy most of the stuff. I mean, currently in Germany also, and here on Castlefest, there are stores selling LARP costumes as well. So yeah, you can a lot. Of yeah, I've seen them a lot, and uh, uh, I like them a lot. And uh, do you have any any uh, tips, any for people who are thinking about it uh, but don't want to invest too much, because you have sorts of all ranges, of course, but. Maybe there's a sort of starter sort of starter set you can use. Mm, not really, because LARPs are so very different and there are so many genres of LARP. A starter set would be very LARP specific. Uh, as in, a starter set for one LARP would not be suited as a starter set of the other LARP. But then again, if you like combat LARPs, because there are LARPs with combat and LARPs without combat, having something like a short, short sword, you can never go wrong with that in most LARPs that have combat. Yeah, so that's a good that's a good one. Just a, a, a more natural kind of sword that doesn't really fit into a, a certain area. You can use it for different kinds of LARP. And you tell, yeah, well what I'm curious about is that e, um, you, you say we have LARP with fighting and LARP without fighting. Well, I think most people who know LARP or heard about it, they always think about the LARP battles. So what's LARP without the fighting? What, what, does ha what happens? 
Well, uh, I already said earlier, for example, I play a historic LARP where I just dress up in historical garb, uh, in this case, Regency dress. And everyone has their character still. All of us have made families. So I am the daughter of someone else on the LARP and I'm the si my sister is walking around on the LARP as in my in-character sister. And because there are many different families and I play a very young character that's looking for a man, for a husband, my LARP there is drinking tea, gossiping, and flirting with all the other guys there in <laughs> Regency style. So it's taking strolls to the park and my family getting really, really, uh, it's really troublesome if I walk around to through the park with the wrong man, with the wrong allegiance. It's just more of a... Uh very com it sounds very, very complicated. It is, but it is again a different kind of drama that's... And basically, that's what we're all looking for in LARP. It's it's drama because that's fun. Yeah, real drama. And and uh, what I was thinking about because you 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 are uh, trying to get these men in the story. Well, but you're maybe for for several days you're playing this character. Um, does it happen that you actually fall in love? People actually fall in love while playing because it can be so uh, so convincing, convincing, especially for more experience. That at some point you just had a sparkle from wow. Actually, she's really nice, or he is really nice. Uh, yeah, that can happen. I mean, there are plenty of people who found relationships through LARPs, but with these LARPs, there are definitely rules in place, and they make sure that everything only happens if the other person agrees with it. And, I mean, it's a Regency LARP. This whole idea of the LARP actually came from the Corona period, where you can have a LARP with social distancing. Because Regency... Is very heavy on. Yeah, 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 yeah uh, exa exactly. Of course, yeah, but I may mean, of course, in in a in a, in a in a proper way afterwards. From well, it was you were so convincing. I actually I actually felt something, you know. Then, uh, but okay. I mean, that would not be different than outside of a LARP. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for all this uh, information. Um, um, yeah. Uh, today you are still here on Cast Fest, and tomorrow on Sunday, so you guys can come. Check out this LARP villages. Um, 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 f uh, what can they expect when they arrive here? Well, here you can ask all your questions about LARP, whether you don't know what LARP is or whether you're already an experienced LARPer or looking for more LARPs, because you can always use more LARPs. And uh, we're running twice a day, we're running a quest uh, at 11 and at 4.30. You can experience a short LARP adventure for of about an hour, which contains um, some of the talking and political play of LARP and part of the ritual bits of LARP. Um, aside from that, at one o'clock we have uh, a LARP battle training in the arena. Oh, that sounds so cool. And now we've come to the most fun part, where I will be participating in a small LARP adventure, uh, at least experience. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Shall we go? I'm fully dressed up in this amazing costume with props and everything with the help of our LARP friends here and the adventure is finally starting. I'm so excited and a bit nervous as well. Oh, why? Yes, my lady, how can I help you? There is a problem here in the LARP village. A demon infested one corner of our LARP village and we can't get rid of him. Can a you demon? Ask? Yes, a demon. But with this, I'm not skilled enough to... I, to have, I have a sword with me, but I can't fight with it, sir. I'm sorry. Can you, can you maybe find some help to help us? Because we really need our LARP village back. Oh, my God. I have to find some, some, someone who's very skilled to help me slay this demon. Where can I find some knights or warriors? Hello, hello. There's a demon in the corner of the LARP village. And it's about to attack. Will you help me? Please help me to defeat him, because I only have this. And you guys look like very fierce warriors and wizards. I can imagine you need some help by now. That's all you got? That's all I got. But it's a very good knife for my bread and things like that. So. But you're fighting a demon, or you want to fight us. With a bread knife. I need your help. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, we have swords, we have swords. Oh, really? You should... I've I've got coin for you as well from the mayor of the law village. Well, that was easy. Uh, 
Shall we go? <laughs> <laughs> it's enough for you. Uh, I want some too. Fine. Fine, we'll do some actual helping. But then you need to uh, be worthy of the help. Wouldn't you say it needs to be, I mean, just a bread knife. Strength of arms, maybe, just to see if he's a tough guy, if he can. Yeah, that would be a smart idea. Yeah. Save, it, save it for us. Yeah, right. I will hold it for you, and I will definitely give it back. You said definitely. Definitely, definitely give, it give it back. Yeah, yeah. Right, but who of us will do the actual testing then? Nah. I heard it's a demon from the hills of Gardov. So, you know anything how to slay it, maybe? Ooh. That's the that's the good stuff. The guard off. The guard yeah, off. That's the damn D. We need to help this guy. What's the good stuff? We really yeah. No. You don't want to do that with a red knife. No. But if there's help to be done, you need to prove yourself. Uh, prove let's myself. Let's just test it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need we need to we need to figure out who is going to do the helper. <laughs> One, two, three. Sorry. One, two, three. Oh. Well, really? So Good you're point. you're gonna test me if I'm worthy. I will. Are you ready? So what am I going to do? You're gonna grab your knife and you're gonna try to defeat me in a little battle. All right. I'll put on the mic for one second. Fine enough, sure, fine. We'll take it. All right, I heard it's in the in the corner of the encampment. Oh. Will you guys lead? I, I think was you look like uh, we have the best armor, I think. No, 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 uh, my friend, just let's go together. <laughs> let's go together. Let's go together. Oh no, there he is. Hey, He's got blood on the altar and everything. Um, bunch of mortals, I see. Yeah, in he he fought it up. It it wasn't by his request. Go away, you foul demon, and leave our families alone in this law village. We just want to leave in peace. Exactly. You, well spoken. We want to live in peace. No more shenanigans. No more. What was it again? Family stolen. <laughs> None of that. So just you know, be peaceful on your way. But in my ever-forgiving nature, I shall grant you the chance to kneel before my might. Do this and sacrifice to me. I say I weapons. I say weapons. Nope. None of that. You have the bread knife. Let's go yeah. for the fucker. Uh, you go, you go. <laughs> More souls. You've proven yourself. You're strong. But Come on. First, strike. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. You mortals will never defeat me, for I am Dagoth. Never again. Yeah. Oh, I don't trust you. 
So how do you now, you foul beast? That, that was, that was it's... Good I love it. Ah. We saved the village. All our children will be safe now. What a wonderful success we have. Well done, adventure. Well done. Victory. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for your help. We saved the village with all the heroes. And uh, actually, I did a bit of fighting, quite fighting my well, good fighting uh, myself. Uh, it was so much fun. Thank you for watching. Thank you for participating. And have lots of fun here in the Lob Village and Ocast Fest, of course. And now, if you see them, you can always say hi, maybe, or ask about LARP. Guys, guys, I would like to get those back, you know, the real cost fist coins. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I thought you wanted to say no, no way, bye. <laughs> All right, so we promised it a couple of times and we had some logistical issues, which is fine. It happens when it's live television. But I'm so honored to have you right here beside me. Thank you. Oli, uh, welcome back to CastleFest. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy to be back. This is Oliver from Fraun and Niels from Fraun. I think you need no introductions, guys. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side. <laughs> no, but you're one of the big bands here that have been at Castle Fest since the beginning, I would say. Uh, that's really nice. I think I've uh, seen the second Castle Fest. And actually, we had a moment before we thought, actually, we should count. Maybe it's our 10th, maybe we have an anniversary. We don't know. But we've been here like very often, and we always enjoyed it. I have very old pictures. I don't know if they're from 2005 or 2006 with Omnia and Rapalio on stage. May have been you as well. For sure, I was around then. <laughs> I think I'm not sure. Maybe founded 2000 and yeah, five or six the first Castle Fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, how does it feel to be back on these grounds? Uh, it feels great, and of course, after a pandemic, after being two years at home, it feels really nice because it gives you the feeling. Yes, finally, we are back to the life that we like so much and that we miss so much. I must say, you filled in the time of the. Well, pandemic, I, I refer to it as the intermediate, let's say. I hate the word pandemic. Um, but you filled in your time marvelously with an awesome online show, yes. which I think like sold out as far as that can happen in an online situation. And you had some really awesome gigs as well with your laptop later on, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did some solo things for, um, American, uh, for American guys who make also a nice festival. Um, yeah, it actually, that was kind of the positive th thing of the pandemic that you can work on such things because like okay you're not ar traveling around so you have some more time and it was really also pushing like the soul okay you're still a musician even if you don't travel every weekend yeah. so yeah it was a, a, a wonderful party uh, li a life and and we have a big television at home as I think many do so it, it felt you know like we were there almost and the, the production value of your online concert was just yeah, through the roof and you made a DVD out of it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, first we were like, uh, we thought, oh, we don't want to do online concert, people are sitting too much in front of their laptops and we thought the pandemic is just a short thing and then it was going on and on and longer and longer. Then there was the car accidents, car, ci uh, car cinema uh, yeah. concerts, we said this we really don't want to do. But at a certain point, we had the feeling people really want to see us live, and we also wanted to give something to share. And so we decided to do actually two online concerts we did. And the second one, we did really with a lot of effort, and we made a DVD. But this we could only put in our new uh, CD. It comes in a book, and we could only do this in a limited um, <laughs> edition. 
because uh, seriously, it, it's really stupid uh, music business facts. But the songs, many of the songs we played, are still belong to Universal Music, and so we could only get, I think, 1,500 copies. Right. Uh, the reason I'm laughing is that they sold out in what was it hours? It was pretty fast sold out. It's, it was a really nice. We're really happy to see this. But I also like it. I like it to have things that are rare, limited editions. I love this feeling. Because everything is digital, but I really wanted to make a book that looks nice, that you can have in your hand. You read it, we have beautiful artwork there. I'm an old-fashioned person, and I think that people who come here like to be remembered about the old-fashioned world, where things are real, not digital. I think it's important also to not lose this part of ourselves, totally. It's interesting that you say that because the, the old fashioned music, of course, of Found was way more, let's say, pagan. Yeah. And, and you completely went back to that, right? I, and, and how does it feel to be like full circle now? Oh, it's fantastic because it was a beautiful journey we had. I don't know what to say that this seven or eight years with Universal were for nothing. It really helped us a lot mm -hmm. because it broadened our audience and that was important. Because I think like seven, nine years ago, when we started the Universal thing, the world was not really ready for pagan folk. Mm. We had really problems filling our concerts. People thought, what is this? This is freaky. And now we have Faun and we have Heilung and Vadruna. And every yeah. pagan is so good, it's so important. And luckily, we could fill this gap and get a great audience. We have really beautiful people who are not pagans and who don't come to medieval markets. But hey, we know you via TV advertisement. And they visit our concerts and they're really in love. And we're thankful for this, but we're even more thankful to be back now, to be our own boss and be able to do what we want to do musically also. Yeah, I can definitely imagine if, if your heart is put into it so much that you want to be your own boss indeed. Um, now this whole festival, we are backstage, but everybody's gearing up towards the moment where you know the wicker uh, ritual will, be, will, will commence. I, I'm wondering, what is the significance of this ritual? Because you've seen it so many times, you've played, you know, um, in, in, let's say in the vicinity of the ritual, eh, either before or after. Um, I, I, there was a, a, a year where it was like integrated in music as well. So music is a very important part in this um, uh, ritual that we have here at Castlefest. What is the significance for you? Well, uh, actually, it's really it's something really meaningful for me. I, w I was myself have. Uh, written some uh, some wish on a paper and I laid it there and it's like I have to I had a moment also like uh, on the before my eye a little bit uh, or feeling of that so um, so I I think that that's kind of uh, something you miss in your everyday life and um, this is like um, yeah you, you you can put a wish for the uh, later uh, for the later future in it and you think about it. You think about a moment, and that's also we have so uh, such fast lives. When do you do it? Yeah. This so, th this so for me it's really really meaningful. Yeah, it's like a moment in time just to really focus on something that is significant to you, right? Yeah, I think in general we um, this is nice about the pagan movement that we try to integrate more rituals into our lives. Because it was normal in older traditions to have like initiation rituals when you get an adult to mark the life. Like we have also every year, like when the winter coming, we kind of die and then we're reborn. And to not make this uh, conscious by just putting the central heating a little higher, I think it's it's a mistake because the time is just shifting through our hands. And I think this is really important to have now Lugnazar to have this really big big things moments in the year to celebrate them fully. I, I, the mark, mark, marking of the time is something I, I really uh, connect with because the Castle Fest for many is like New Year's Eve. Huh? If, uh, I, I think you know about the dive in the ocean that a lot of people do uh, after the last concert. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a good place to be, I think, if you live more closely to the pagan ideas. Um, and I hope you can, through your music, inspire other people to also be more conscious of what it is that we are doing with nature, with society as a whole, by just living fast, large, and basically in debt. So, yeah. Yeah, this was also why we were so thankful to have the possibility with Universal Music, to because, of course, the music we had to adapt for the singles a little bit, 
But we were able, we were singing about Walpurgisnacht, about pagan fertility rituals. We were singing in a TV show in Germany that has four million people watching and really people who never touched a pagan aspect in their life. And so we had the feeling, maybe a certain percentage of these people we just make interested in the scene. Yes. And because we, we believe in it, we don't want to lead them into something wrong because we really believe it's good for them. Yeah, they plant a seed, basically. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. All right. Well, I know you have to prepare for uh, your upcoming show tonight. And I also know that you want to be there for the ritual. So I want to thank you for your time. It's a brief interview, but yeah, you know, you, are, uh, you have a full agenda, even at the uh, festival of Castle Fest. So yeah, thanks so much for joining. And um, I wish you a safe trip to Lyon, where you will, will be tomorrow. How small can Europe be? You have a long way to go, so uh, safe we're travel. We're sleeping when we travel, <laughs> and yeah. but luckily we travel a lot and it's a great possibility. And for the people, if they really like the show, if they like us, uh, we will be back like 19 and 20 October in Holland. So mm. please be welcome. That's true, you have two big venues lined up, right? It's a Venlo and Utrecht, yes. and both are tickets available, and we're happy to come back. Really, All always right. great. So if you couldn't make it here, you've seen them now live, you'll see them live in the live stream later on. And if you aren't sold out already, which I very well can imagine, come to Tilburg or Utrecht. All right, enjoy the stream. And uh, next up, uh, yeah, the, the Wicca ritual, of course, and after that, Nebala. All right, see you soon. It's really nice, well done.